Hello and welcome to today's webinar entitled, Using a Federated Identity Service Based on Virtualization to Integrate, Store, and Deliver Identity Data. My name is Emily Cashel. I'm with Radiant Logic, and I'll be your moderator for today's program. Before we begin, I'd like to remind you that your lines will be muted for the duration of the webinar. However, if you have a question, you may enter it in the GoToWebinar window, and we will have a Q&A session at the end, if time allows. If we are not able to get to your question during the webcast, we'll send a personal email to follow up. Also, this webcast will be recorded and sent out along with a copy of the presentation slides within the next 24 hours. Our speaker today will be Wade Ellery, Senior Solutions Architect with Radiant Logic. Wade has extensive experience in enterprise IT direct and channel software and services sales and management. He has in-depth knowledge and experience in enterprise IAM, IAG, risk and compliance, and IT security challenges. Wade, over to you. Thank you very much, and Happy New Year, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and hello to our ships at sea. This is the first webinar for 2017 for Radiant Logic. It's amazing to me as I sit here thinking about how fast 2016 went by, and I hope we all have a very prosperous 2017. Thank you all for joining me today. What we're going to be focusing on today is our Federated Identity and Context Service uh, provided by Radiant Logic with a real honing in on some of the additional value that the solution can bring in what is basically an ever-changing environment. One of the things that I think is a certainty in, in life besides taxes and death is change, and change in IT is almost a mantra. And that's really been seen tremendously uh, in the last decade or so as we've really taken on a whole new level of complexity, integration, and uh, expansion of the IT infrastructure. As you can remember from the, if you've been in the business long enough, the old days, uh, the, the center of this little uh, cube here was a simple world. We had our on-premise applications. We owned the desktop. Everybody was an employee. Uh, IT could make rules and follow them fairly uh, strictly, and everyone was secure within that bubble. But the world has really changed tremendously over that time period. And what we've seen is an expansion on all three of these axes. The devices that we're using now are no longer even owned by the organization. They may be uh, any variety of endpoints that the, the, the uh, customer or the employee or contractor chooses to use to access information. The actual constituencies themselves, the employees, are now contractors and partners and customers and members and people that we don't have any even direct control or authority over. And we even have a higher level of obligation to provide them with a seamless, frictionless experience because as customers, we want to make sure that those individuals come back to us again and again and that for them, the interaction with our information in a digital manner is very attractive, very easy, and something they find uh, more likely to be repeated than potentially moving outside to a, uh, a non-digital experience or an alternative uh, provider than ourselves. But what we want to focus on today is really what's happening on the vertical axis here, what's happening with applications, and what's happening with the cloud. Because what's transformed our environment is, again, we used to have all our applications internally, we wrote a lot of them ourselves. We bought some from, from software vendors. We ran them all ourselves. We did our own integration. And we controlled that environment pretty tightly. And we understood it. And we could see it, and we could audit it, and we could, we could do work on it ourselves as we needed to, and, and basically hone it and, and tune it to get the kind of performance we were looking for. What's happened, though, is that the requirement for applications has gone beyond what we can provide internally. And both from a cost basis, from a implementation and in ease or speed to market basis, and also just for an overall corporate philosophy, we're seeing more and more of our customers now moving into the cloud. And not just moving into the cloud for SaaS applications or to share some information with a partner, but potentially moving their whole infrastructure up into the cloud, moving their data centers from a physical world that they owned to a hosted environment and infrastructure as a service implementation in an Azure or an Amazon uh, environment where really now I've shifted all that 
architecture and all that infrastructure into a completely different world. Now that in itself brings with it some challenges. When we first started to move into the cloud, the applications that were hosted by third parties, Salesforce and ServiceNow and other applications that we wanted to get access to, required us to be able to authenticate and authorize to those applications in the cloud in a different way than we did it on-premise. On-premise, we use username and password. We talk directly to the application. Or we use the web access management solution to integrate our web-based application so that we could log on once with our local AD domain credentials and get access to all the local web applications running in our environment. But as we moved into the cloud, a different set of protocols and a different set of standards has been created to provide a more seamless and easier integration when you don't own the endpoint, when you can't go to the web server hosting the client application and install your own shim for SiteMinder, because you don't own that server. It's owned by the third party that hosts that application, and they can't have shims from every one of their customers installing on their web servers. So they created federation, the idea of using a, uh, a federated fabric and an identity provider and a service provider relationship so you can set up a trust between these cloud applications and the on-premise sources of identity. Not a trust in the traditional AD domain way, but a trust simply to say that if you send me a user from your environment, I already trust you, so I'm going to trust that that user is who you say he is, and I'm going to give him authorization to access resources. Now that works very well in an environment where you have all of your users in one single point that the federated access solution, the pings, the SiteMinder SSOs, the Cloud Federation Services from Radiant Logic, all those tools, OpenAM, uh, Oracle Access Manager, that use that identity information to provide a user access to cloud applications, they want that identity information in one place. They want it in one protocol and one standard they can make one call to. Now the challenge is though that in most of the organizations, especially all the customers and clients that we work with, that's not the world we live in. We don't live in a world of a simple directory. Now if you're a, a small company, a couple hundred people, everybody's in one AD domain, uh, it's, it's possible to have that single point basically out of the box. But in other organizations where you've grown through mergers and acquisitions, where you've brought on additional identity stores, to support particular applications where you have security information that has to be integrated into your decision-making process or your user profile, all those identities don't exist in one place easily. As you can see at the bottom of the slide here, databases, LDAP directories, AD domains, those are all places you're going to find identity data. But your federated access layer, your service application and, and the IDP layer that wants to provide that authentication for that user to those cloud apps, really wants to go to one place to find all that information. And this is where Radiant Logic has been a very powerful tool for our customers, is to bring them that one place to go to find all the information you need for federated authentication, and then building a complete claim so you can send that up to the application and get a very robust level of authorization. But what we're going to focus on today, even more so, is what's happening in the world now of migration to these platforms, where as I mentioned earlier, we're not just authenticating now to applications that are hosted outside our organization, we're looking at actually moving our identities from our on-premise stores up into uh, cloud-based infrastructure. And in addition to that, at the same time, I have to also provision my users into those application endpoints. So if I have a Salesforce, I have a service now, for that user to be able to use Federation, he has to have a corresponding account in that cloud application. And a lot of organizations sort of forget that step. You can't forget that step in the sense that you don't do it and, you, and users still get access, but you kind of leave it out of the plan or the idea that, oh, by the way, you're going to have to be able to find a way to create all of your user accounts inside this cloud application. Now, if that cloud application is Office 365, it may be leveraging Azure AD as that repository. So now you have to move all your users into Azure AD. But if it's Salesforce, you're going to provision into Salesforce also. 
And once you've done that, once you've created that uh, identity up in that cloud, then really wouldn't it be great if you could grab that identity information and bring that back to that one centralized source of identity information, that global user profile that we created earlier for this whole process, and augment that with the information I have in the cloud. Because there's attributes in Salesforce, there's information in ServiceNow that's valuable to my user profile that I can use for auditing and compliance, I can use for access control, I can use for assigning resources. So I want to have as much information and as rich a profile as possible from all those sources. So really the solution that gives you both of those capabilities, in fact there's three capabilities that I've mentioned, is Radian Logic and our Federated Identity Service in correlation with our ICS, Identity Correlation and Synchronization Engine, a very powerful rule-based solution that lets you provision those accounts into those endpoints from a single image inside Radiant Logic that now lets you tailor those provisioning choices to those endpoints to exactly the format, the protocol, the structure, the schema that each different endpoint is looking for and keep that information in sync. So there's a number of functions here that are very important. One is the ability to understand and recognize that not everything out there speaks the same language communicate seamlessly between one system and another. In fact, that is the on-premise challenge that we have with LDAP directories, AD, and databases, and web, or web services access to applications and APIs. Each of these back-end identity sources uses a different protocol, a different structure, a different schema, different naming conventions for their information, so you can't easily put all these together. It's like different countries. It's almost to that level where they speak a different language, they have different customs, they have their own borders. They don't interact really easily together. They don't work commonly very well. So you need the United Nations to bring all those different countries together and do that translation so that any database can get information from an LDAP directory in a format, in a schema, in a protocol that it understands. Now this also plays out when you start moving this information up and into the cloud. Because these applications in the cloud, these stores that are created in the cloud, they themselves are not all one homogenous, compatible, uh, simpatico world where everybody sings kumbaya every day and gets along. You've got, again, these, these protocol-specific, structure-specific, schema-specific repositories created up there that need to be uh, provisioned to. Salesforce, the, the call, the API that creates a user in Salesforce, won't create a user for Azure, for you in Azure AD, or it won't create a user up in ServiceNow. You need to have a different understanding of the way that application is expecting information, deliver it exactly as it wants it, with the schema and with the field uh, labeling and all the different, the different little caveats and structure requirements that each application has. So with Radiant Logic, not only can you bring together those disparate back ends and bring that global view with a single voice together, but then with ICS you can take that single voice and decide how you want to transform it and translate it as you push that into endpoints that are in the cloud. Or they may be endpoints that are somewhere else in your infrastructure. You may need to move information from an Active Directory to a database somewhere or from an Active Directory to an LDAP directory. But here what we're going to focus on is moving that data from the on-premise up into the cloud. Now when I go into the cloud, there's two pieces there that I need to be cognizant of. One, I need to be able to provision application-specific identity stores into those back ends so those applications have a local user account they can use to integrate with my federation and give users access. But I also need to look at what's happening in terms of whole data center migration, the moving of my identity infrastructure into the cloud. As I move more of my apps into the cloud, where should my user infrastructure be? And that's a real common question we get from our customers now. What's the best practice? What should I do? And in all reality right now, we're seeing customers with really a hybrid model. For quite a while, you're going to have one foot on the dock and one foot in the boat. You're going to be on-premise and you're going to be in the cloud. Because there's things on-premise that are not easily going to be moved or transformed or translated into a cloud infrastructure. If you think about the idea that for the last X number of years we've been phasing out mainframes, 
and how many large corporations still have mainframes because they do some things really, really well and they're tightly integrated into critical business processes. So the idea that you can just pick it all up and carry it off into a new organization takes some time, takes some effort, takes some planning, and it really takes a powerful and flexible system to help you move that. So initially, look to see where the core of your applications are, focus on your identities there, and build this, this tool, this process, this global aggregated profile and this synchronization engine so that you can now start to move that information up into the cloud. And then as you move into the cloud, make decisions about where you want that information stored and what do you want it to look like. Do you want to create your AD structure again in an Azure environment and stand up a number of AD domain servers and have them running similar as they do on-premise? Maybe not so much because a lot of the on-premise use for AD was around a domain structure uses around managing printers that were local to you, making sure that your printer uh, job went to the, the printer around the corner, not the one in three floors away, managing your file share, which may or may not be the way your company stores shared information now, and other functions that were more terrestrial based. So as you move into a cloud infrastructure, do you need that same uh, level of, of integration? Uh, do you need that same level of, of policy enforcement? Or can you store your identities in the cloud in an alternative, an LDAP directory, or looking at Radiant Logic's highly scalable HDAP store as a way of storing information in AWS, standing up Radiant Logic there, it becomes the source of identity for your cloud applications. It becomes the source of identity behind your IDP and your federation layer. So you have a lot of options here. And the really nice thing about Radiant Logic is that nothing you do with our tool is going to pigeonhole you into one option. You're not committed to any particular vendor in terms of where you store your information or what federated access uh, solution you use or which cloud-hosted uh, vendor you choose. We can work with all these different organizations and all these different structures and schemas and applications because we've been this universal layer from the very beginning. And we also support you in moving from one to another because we have the ability to apply these rules and move this information from one protocol and one standard and schema to another. As you make your decisions, as you evolve your cloud uh, infrastructure, you may start out in one place and end up three years from now in a completely different place and a different structure. And we can help you make those transitions as seamlessly as possible with the goal always being to insulate the end user from the experience of change. They shouldn't, if at all possible, recognize that anything has changed as you expand and move and migrate your infrastructure around the environment. You want them to have this experience of easier, faster, more complete interaction with you and no disruption to that not having them have to reset their passwords because you migrated from one platform to another and passwords weren't compatible, or uh, not having them have to log in out of one system and log into another because the two systems are now both hosted in the cloud but don't talk to each other and don't have a common identity source. We want to eliminate all that friction, especially on the customer side of the environment because it's a competitive landscape out there. You spend a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of effort to capture a customer. And the most critical thing is to hold on to that customer. Anyone in business will tell you it's a lot cheaper to keep a customer than it is to go and get a new one. Um, although you would think my cable company doesn't understand that concept. Um, so what we're doing here is we're providing you now with an infrastructure that helps you build that much simpler and much smoother environment. Now again, on the federated access side of the model here, where we're talking about um, accessing applications that are hosted in the cloud, Radiant Logic provides Cloud Federation Services. And Cloud Federation Services is our application that's tightly coupled with our Federated Identity Service Identity Store that allows you to take all this user identity information, which is in a on-premise uh, protocol and standard and schema, and repackage it into a SAML or WS Fed schema and protocol so that that information that can then be used by applications like uh, Office 365 or applications like ServiceNow or, or um, Salesforce for authentication and potentially authorization of user access in those applications. 
So with Radiant Logic, you have now a complete solution that takes you from your on-premise environment, brings together all those disparate systems. And again, this is bread and butter for us. This is what we do every day. It's what we're optimized for. It's the world we created 15 years ago. It's the product that we built to be the best on the market, far and away, shoulders above anyone else in their ability to connect the back ends and build that single integrated global image and then provide that as it's needed. And then on top of that, layering our cloud federation services, you can go right up into the cloud and start using that immediately for accessing applications uh, that, that will use a SAML or WSFED or an OpenID Connect uh, protocol for authentication and authorization. Now what we're seeing here and what I've been talking about and, and sort of poking around the edges is, is what our CEO is recognizing now and we're really branding as the great migration. And, and if you've ever seen, uh, uh, if you've gone through history and, and watched shows on the History Channel and there's been these massive migrations of, of mankind around the planet. There's been, there's been massive movements of, of in the organ of civilizations from one existing infrastructure or one existing world into a new, more promising uh, area where they have more room to grow, things are, are uh, more efficient, things are more effective, and, and their costs go down. And, and that's driven migrations for, for animals, for human beings, and now it's actually the same forces that are driving the migration of IT infrastructures up into what we call those cloud worlds of Azure and Amazonia. And, and this is a rather uh, cute graphical representation. It does play a little bit on uh, some cute terms to sort of make things seem a little bit easier to, to relate to. But we'll provide these slides and I encourage you all to take a moment when you do get this deck and you have a monitor where you can see a little bit more clearly even take a look here at the, uh, the information that's being shared because this is a really excellent way to show you all the challenges you have in your terrestrial environment. Everything you've got in the ocean there, all those islands and archipelagos are really challenges that you have in your existing identity infrastructure. And there's a whole industry that we work in that's been built around trying to address these challenges. If you look on the right there, you've got the archipelago of orphaned accounts. And if you remember the auditing days when they first started to come in with auditing about 10 years ago, what the auditors went for in their day one was orphaned accounts because they knew every company had abandoned orphaned accounts in their identity infrastructure. They were a security risk, they were a licensing cost, and those were low-hanging fruit for the auditors to identify, find all those, write up their finding, and go, hey, look, you know, you, before I come back and look harder for more things to do, you need to address all these orphaned accounts. And that's a challenge that Radiant Logic can help you address because we give you that global view. We bring those multiple platforms together and those identities together with tools that let you identify what are a Dorfman's account? What accounts belong to someone who's long since gone from the organization? Or an account that was created and the name was misspelled and instead of going back and deleting it, the provisioning administrator just went ahead and started again and left that one in the system. So there's a real benefit to having access to all that information. On the left-hand side there, you can see the devil's cauldron of evolving protocols. And this has been a challenge for applications because a lot of applications, because of the way they're designed, they like to go to one place to get the information they need in a particular protocol that they want to use, and they have a real hard time when you ask them to bend around a corner, to act differently, to speak a different language. And again, Radiant Logic here provides you with that capability of of taking one source of identity and having it be able to be represented and, and spoken in as many different protocols as you need simultaneously for different requirements and different applications. So again, there's a number of things here in this ocean that are challenges that Radiant Logic addresses every day for our customers. The point I want to make is that before you move up to Amazonia or Azuria, you want to make sure you've cleaned up all these challenges. You've eliminated the protocol trans, uh, conflicts. You've eliminated the orphaned accounts. You've gotten away from the unscalable SQL sign-in challenges. You've really done your best to build that one unified source of identity that has the power, the speed, the scale, the flexibility to be able to provide that image to uh, Azuria and Amazonia. 
Because if you've ever moved from one house to another, you recognize at that point in your life, oh my God, I didn't know I had so much stuff. Where does this all come from? Why am I keeping it? What a mess. You spend more time clearing through the clutter and the junk in your existing life than you do setting up your new home. And the key there is don't bring it all with you. Clean it up first. Get to that clean, global, uh, rationalized environment that's eliminated a lot of the pitfalls that we've grown up with. And these aren't failings of the IT department. It's just the nature of the world you live in. Things get piled up in the garage. Your closets get full. You've got three sets of these dishes. You don't know why. And this is an excellent opportunity to go through and use a really efficient tool in Radiant Logic to, to work on cleaning that up. Now, if you've already gotten into uh, Azure and Amazonia, you've already made some strides in the cloud, you're thinking, oh, wow, I wish I'd known this two years ago. It's not too late. Radiant Logic can come into your cloud infrastructure also, your cloud environment, because for us, Identity is identity. Identity stores are identity stores. It doesn't matter if it's hosted on our Amazon server, if it's sitting in an Azure AD, if it's sitting on Salesforce's back end, if it's on your on-premise SQL database. For us, it's endpoints. We talk to everybody. We can work with everybody. So if you're already up in the cloud and you took a lot of this garbage with you, you have a disparate environment now created in the cloud, and you're going to have that between Azure and Amazonia, because most large customers are going to have a foot in both clouds now, and maybe others, like Google Cloud or uh, other vendors that are now bringing up places to store information that you don't have direct physical contact on. So we can come into those environments and help you start to build that, again, that global image, rationalize that information, clear out the, the uh, confusion and the extra information that's the ancillary and and bring all that information together. So we encourage you to uh, take a look at this graphic, think about what's on here, recognize that always in, in many ways are challenges that you face in IT. Uh, we can definitely be a, a source of uh, consultation to explain how we can help you in these areas, uh, address those projects and those use cases, and then really seriously take a look at it as you make the move in this great migration. And it's almost like we're, we're a herd mentality. The animals have started running towards the cloud, and everyone's now joining in. Uh, it, it's sweeping through our customers at an amazing pace. And I think it's going to be something that it's almost uh, irresistible at this point. So the more you can prepare up front, the more you can recognize what you have, the more you can build a flexible model that lets you make that move as seamlessly as possible and allows you to adapt because these are new frontiers. We don't know what life's going to be like in Amazonia. We may find when we get there we wish we'd done things a little bit differently. Well, with Radiant Logic, you have that flexibility. You, on the fly, you can build a new schema. You can put in a new structure or organizational model. You can change the way data is, is related so that you can adapt to the changes that are coming down the road. So to focus on this a little bit more, we're going to talk uh, about identity services for the web and for cloud access. So we understand sort of the underlying principles here that Radiant Logic is, is addressing and, and how this uh, challenge, whether it's, again, an on-premise, it's a cloud migration, whether it's an access management or a synchronization challenge, that there's really some common factors here that have grown up in our IT environments. And it really comes from the fact that Applications and identity information is not a homogenous single blob that we can easily talk to and manage. And this has been a challenge for, for end users for years um, and addressed in a lot of ways by the concept of, of a single sign-on. The idea that the user authenticates with one set of credentials and then gets access to all the applications that they need. And in a SaaS application in the cloud, we go to our, our federated access portal and I see all the applications that I can access. I've already authenticated to the portal or authenticated to a back-end uh, identity structure that gives me access to the portal, and now I can go into any of those applications. And that's a very powerful thing for the end user. It gives them that sense of a seamless, frictionless experience. If I'm a customer and I have a customer account that I load up my, my prepaid card with, 
And at the same time, I have a loyalty account that I use to get points, and I also have another account that I have to log into to order product to be shipped to my house. I'm a frustrated customer, especially if I'm trying to enter these credentials on my phone to do one transaction across three different endpoints. So I want to have a simple, easy way to get to all that functionality, and a single sign-on model does that. But that's only half of the challenge, because if you think about that, the customer's happy on the back end, the IT infrastructure is pulling their hair out, because to provide that single sign-on experience, I need to be able to understand all the places that identity information exists, all the databases my customer loyalty information is in, all the directories that their uh, customer profile is stored in, all the places that I transactionally hold their orders, and be able to bring all that information together to build that single experience for my end user. So there's a real challenge in doing this inside the environment. And if I look at doing this in an AD environment where, it's, where we have a lot of drive now, one of the biggest drivers I would say in moving to the cloud is the drive or the push by Microsoft to bring its customer base into Azure and Office 365. If you want to use Word and Excel and PowerPoint and, and OneNote and all the other SharePoint functions that Microsoft makes available, a very powerful end user productivity suite, which is ubiquitous in most industries, you're going to have to move up into Azure now to make that possible to move forward. But the challenge is my on-premise environment has so many different Active Directory domains that I don't have that single global image of my users that Azure is looking for. Azure doesn't want you setting up multiple tenants to mimic multiple domains. It's not a model they support. They've recognized that in the cloud, at scale, you need that one ubiquitous global profile. But the challenge with, with multiple AD domains is, again, that even though it's the same product, the same vendor, because of the security structures and the way things are set up, and users can be duplicated between domains because there's no requirement for them to be unique if it's a different domain or forest, I can't easily just mush all this together. AD consolidation has become a major challenge for a lot of our customers. So with Radian Logic, we can offer you a way to virtually to bring together those multiple AD domains into a new structure, a common route or a flat lawn or a newly organized structure or maintain the existing structures on the back end AD domains but bring them into a single common global profile so that when I'm moving to Azure, when I'm moving this up to an AD server on Amazon, when I'm taking this information someplace else, or I'm accessing this information with a federated identity service or federated uh, access layer, I'm able to go one place and get all the information I need about all my AD users. I'm able to authenticate those users against their AD passwords. And even if they exist in multiple AD domains, Radiant Logic is smart enough to route that user back, back to the proper domain for their password. But if they fail to authenticate to the first domain where I know they're stored, I can then hop over automatically to the second domain that they have an account in and try their password there. So I'm not asking my users now to go through a password reset process to build one single passwords in all my back ends as I aggregate. I can handle that again with frictionless user interface and the user doesn't know that the back ends are changing. Now one of the challenges that we've had historically with bringing together Active Directory is that Microsoft stored the password in AD in a way that couldn't easily be read. I can't go into AD and read the password. So if I'm moving that password from one place to another, I couldn't pick it up from AD and carry it with me to my next location. I couldn't move it from AD Forest A to AD Forest B because it wasn't a readable field. Now, I could get all the other attributes. I could get your department name and your title and your user ID and move that around or bring that into the federated identity service, but I couldn't do passwords. Well, I'm very happy to say we've now, because Microsoft has allowed their uh, APIs to uh, provide this, this functionality, we can actually now read an AD password and bring that information up into the Federated Identity Service. So I can have AD credentials now stored at the Radiant Logic level in the unified global profile and 
still look for changes on the back end. So if something on the system changes the AD password off the desktop or another application, that's going to be reflected in the version stored in Radiant Logic. But this gives me the ability now to push that password up into Azure if I want to, push it into a domain that I've set up in Amazon, or I can have Radiant Logic be the point of authentication if that back end AD is a partner network and my partner network connection may not be 7x2459, but I'm using my partner's identities to provide access to my application that I've said is available 59s, then I have to make sure I've got a local copy of that password. If I disconnect from their back end, my customers can still access my application using their credentials. So Radiant Logic now has the capability of providing that model that capability of bringing together Active Directory domains, but also integrating passwords now in a way that we didn't have before. So this opens up a lot of capabilities in terms of AD migration, AD aggregation, providing that global image, helping move up into the cloud, and giving you some flexibility, especially in mergers and acquisitions, where I'm bringing together two disparate companies, and I don't want to deprovision a 100,000 users in one organization and reprovision them in another Active Directory and have to rebuild all that infrastructure and then get told a year and a half later we're spinning that organization out, rip all those people back out of my Active Directory. What if I could, in just a matter of literally hours or days, connect those two systems together, build a virtual uh, view of an aggregated AD world and provide that to my applications, provide that to the cloud, and be able to get business uh, value out of that merger and acquisition right up front. If you still want to migrate all those backends and collapse those domains and get rid of that infrastructure, you've got all the time in the world without end user direct disruption, without end user password synchronization where the user gets confused about which I use my old AD password, my new AD password, why aren't they the same? All the other challenges that come with having a, a distributed AD infrastructure when you're an M&A model. So there's a tremendous amount of value there. And in the federated access system, again, as we mentioned, that cloud federation layer wants that single point of identity information to do the authentication for that user to those applications. And Ray and Logic provides that. But beyond authentication, beyond bringing together all that identity information, we also take it further. We go into authorization. Authorization is saying, I not only know who you are, but now I know enough about you to know what parts of my application, what functions, functions, what features I want to give you access to. I've let you in the front door. Instead of giving you the run of the whole house, I'm going to say these are the rooms you can go into. I've let you into my financial application for managing my, man, managing my financial uh, services, but I don't want you doing purchase orders. I only want you to be able to manage accounts receivable. So I want to be able to control where you go and what you do based on more information I know about you. Well, the more information you have, the richer that global profile is, the more attributes you have from more sources, and especially when you start to aggregate in things like security uh, infrastructure where you've got uh, profile information, security clearance information, you've got potentially uh, physical card access uh, status, you've got the ability to pull in more information from uh, uh, access control points to know what kind of device is the person on, where are they at, is this a reasonable time for them. When you start pulling all that information together, you get extremely rich profile that allows you to make risk-based decisions about authorization and even about authenticating a user into a system and authorizing their access beyond that first step. So key and critical to all that enhanced security, all those layers we're needing to build now on a cybersecurity layer to make sure that we don't get hacked, to make sure that the person who's coming and presenting your username and your password is actually you and has a, we have enough sufficient information about the you that's coming to us to say where that user can go with that authorization and what they can access. And then on the migration and consolidation layer, that ability to build that global profile and then push that global profile to other endpoints on-premise and primarily into the cloud, whether it be a standalone app like Salesforce or into a, a cloud infrastructure like Azure or Amazon, 
That's a critical function that's been part of Radiant Logic for a number of years. What we're seeing is that with our products, the world's requirements, IT world's requirements for functionality are rising up now to meet the functionality of our products that we've had. These are not things we've just spun up three months ago because we thought it was a good market move. These are rich and mature and tightly integrated products within our suite that are now aligning with where we see the world going, where we see the market moving, where we see the requirements now that our customers are facing in order to be competitive, in order to make the uh, required moves that their organizations and their executives are asking of them. So as you move into this model, as you look in, at the, the tools that Radiant Logic brings, there's a few things that are really important to understand. It almost seems somewhat magical that we can create this global profile and do all these things and recognize all this, but there's some real concrete functions and features that are required. And when you go out and look at any application to do this kind of work, to do synchronization of identities, to build that global profile, to connect your applications or your single sign-on, you really need to go through these five steps to validate that application has this rich set of functions. Because if you're missing any one of these layers in the pyramid, you have a vehicle without tires, or you have a bicycle without handlebars. You have parts, but you can't use it properly. You can't use it to its fullest extent unless you have all the parts. And I'll go through these in rather uh, high level, but we can definitely get into a deeper conversation with customers on why these are important. The first one is just the ability to bring users together and get it right. You don't want to not put together the user who has a different identity on systems, on two different systems. If I'm R. Jones on one platform or Roberta J on another, I'm the same person, the system has to be smart enough to know how to recognize that and build that into one global profile. Otherwise, you don't have the benefit to that. But equally, I can have R. Jones on two different systems that are two different people. And I need to know that and be able to not bring those people together. I don't want the new account executive for the West Coast being merged into the profile for the CFO, and all of a sudden, he's got access to my financial systems. That's not right, and it won't work, and you have to have a platform that can understand that. So simply saying we can connect to the back ends and read them all together, there's a logic that needs to be put into place. There's rules. There's work that has to be done, and the tool has to be capable of doing those two things. If you don't, you're going to build a failed system. Either it won't work for single sign-on, or you're going to give access to the wrong people, and that can be critical. Secondly, when you've got that relationship established where you know all the places the user exists. You've eliminated the overlap. Now you want to bring all those attributes together. You want to bring those attributes together and understand how to build this rich global profile. Because if you can't take a SQL table and an LDAP directory and an AD user schema and merge that together into a single common schema that can be read and shared, then bringing all those back ends together has very little value. You're going to end up with basically a user ID and a password and nothing else, and that's a real misuse of the capabilities here. So you have to have the power and the capability to build that joined profile and bring together all those attributes. Now you've got to be able to leverage that, because where the power here is, is an authorization, an authorization around attributes. But instead of leaping all the way up to a policy-based, attribute-based access control system, you can actually implement today attribute-based groups, groups that are generated dynamically based on attributes. I'm in Chicago. I'm in sales. I'm in large accounts. I'm in this particular group. I moved to New York. I'm out of the Chicago large sales group, and now I'm in the New York large sales group based on my attribute values. I cut down tremendously on the overhead for group provisioning. I cut down tremendously on the overhead for role management and role provisioning. My auditing and compliance is simplified now because users only exist where their attributes place them. And I get a granular level of, of authorization in my applications without altering them at all. They already use groups for authorization. Just populate your groups now based on attributes. And again, a very flexible system. We can use existing groups. We can make them look like static groups for applications that can't understand dynamic groups. We can detect changes in real time to make sure the groups are always accurate. It's a very powerful piece of the tool. And if you're going to build this infrastructure, make sure you've got 
capabilities to really leverage the benefits of that joint profile. Now, you also have to be able to provide this in multiple protocol schemas, structures, and data uh, sets. The old idea of the meta directory, I'm going to bring all my information together, I'm going to provision into one big directory, and everyone's going to consume that one big directory. Well, that's like saying, you know what, we're going to buy nothing but oatmeal, and we're going to make oatmeal every day, and everyone's going to eat oatmeal from one big pot. Well, that cuts down on the cooking, it cuts down on the number of pots, it cuts down on the questions of what's for breakfast, but people get sick of it real quick, and some people can't eat oatmeal. So your applications, your outside vendors, your SaaS applications, they can't work in a world where they only have one option for structure and schema and protocol. They speak different languages. They're going to want different information. So you have to be able to provide now the benefits of this big global profile, these dynamic groups, and all this functionality in many different views, in many different ways, simultaneously to different applications in just the way they require it and be able to do that without writing code. This is all done with point and click. This is all configuration. I'm not a coder. I don't write code since 1980 with Fortran and punch cards, but I can configure a complete environment with Radiant Logic using nothing but my mouse and my keyboard. This is designed to be an application that you don't build yourself. It's an application you deploy quickly and gives you results immediately. So the capabilities of doing all this translation transformation is built into the product and is critical. And then the, the real key at the top of the pyramid, the part that completes the picture, is speed and scalability. And we can talk more and you can definitely have a conversation around our HDAP infrastructure and the adoption of big data technology from Apache and Hadoop that allows us to scale uh, in ways that traditional directory structures just are not capable of, and also allows us to have a level of performance for reads and for writes that's unseen in directory infrastructure and swamps what you can do in a database. So if you remember the healthcare.gov rollout in 2013, the amount of time people were waiting for responses to come back from the application, the timeouts that we're getting, and the, the very, very slow performance. The problem with that infrastructure was they built a large, highly scaled model, but they were pulling information in real time from back ends that were not designed to provide that information quickly. They were trying to join together information in real time that hadn't been pre-calculated and stored, so they were suffering tremendously. This is where Radiant Logic solves that problem. All the benefits of this aggregation and bringing together and transforming and translating is delivered at the speed of a directory, it's delivered in milliseconds, it's delivered at a level of performance where we have customers doing financial transactions and trading on information based on their ability to authenticate and authorize with Radiant Logic. So if we can support that level of speed in a massive scale, you know we can support the requirements your organization has. So when you start looking at what Radiant Logic does, we use a really simple acronym to explain how the application works. And if you remember CAMP, if you like camping or you hate camping, you probably have an opinion one way or the other, just remember CAMP. So on the left-hand side where the people are standing in the boxes, we're going to connect to the sources of identity. That's our C. And then A is aggregation. We're going to virtualize those backends, aggregate together those identities as we saw in the pyramid. We're going to build that union and that join. We're going to correlate all the data together and integrate that into a global profile. And then we're going to model that information. We're going to take that aggregated data and we're going to make it into different views and different subsets and build dynamic groups and manipulate that information into the particular way that each application wants to be able to consume that information. So we can model that data simultaneously in multiple different ways. And then we're going to publish that data out to the application. That application may be an endpoint application. It may be an access management layer. It may be a federated access solution. It may be an application running in the cloud. It can be any, any application, any endpoint that wants and needs to consume information, identity information. But now in the world of the Internet of Things, it's not just human identities that we're managing. Every object has an identity. Every object has attributes. Every object has a relationship to other objects and other attributes and other systems so that object is what we're actually talking about now. 
we use the word identity because it's very ubiquitous in our industry and we understand it, but as this world expands, take off blinders and, and look at a broader view of every object out there, whether it's a refrigerator, it's a locomotive, or it's a uh, IT consultant, they all have identity information, they all have attributes about them, they all have systems they have to interact with, and Radiant Logic can help you bring that together, manage that, and deliver that, or publish that, slash P on camp, publish that information out exactly as it's needed in the right protocol, structure, and schema. Now, when we're looking at uh, the application, and, and where does Radiant Logic sit, a lot of times we're compared with other platforms or other solutions from other vendors, but it really is an apple and an orange comparison. What I like to say is we're the pipes in the wall. We're designed to deliver the water at the right temperature, the right pressure, at the right place at the right time. But you need a faucet on the end of that pipe in order to use that water, whether it's a shower head or a sink faucet or a hose. Each has a different function. Each uses that water a different way. These applications on the top here for identity management, for access management, for audit and compliance provisioning, those are the faucets that consume identity information. And as we saw over and over again, those faucets would love to connect to one pipe that gives them exactly the water they want and exactly the time and the place and temperature and pressure they're looking for. And maybe a different place in the house, a different pipe delivers different pressure and temperature depending on what's needed. So to do that, you bring in Radiant Logic, because Radiant Logic takes those disparate backends, all those sources of identity, brings them together in a common structure, protocol, schema, and then reforms those into exactly the, the model and the way that those different silos of identity information need it. So if you're looking at a new provisioning solution, if you're bringing in an audit and compliance platform, if you're looking for a, an application to give you access to applications in the cloud, that's great. Whatever you're looking at, that application is going to work faster, implement quicker, be more flexible, and be easier to replace later when you get a new IT management if you have Radiant Logic in place. And in many ways, the functionality of that product is going to be limited if you don't have Radiant Logic in place, because you're not going to be able to do things that you can when you have the capability of bringing all this information together, quickly bringing in uh, users from a new mergers and acquisitions, whatever the challenge may be in your environment, having Radiant Logic there is going to make every one of your applications in IT work faster, work better, give a better user experience, and be more flexible and easier to move in and out of. Now to, to sort of drive that point home, I'm going to talk a little bit about Steve Price at Intel. That's actually not a picture of Steve there. That's stock photo that Intel uses for what an IT manager looks like. But what Steve did at Intel is he actually wanted to prove the value of Radiant Logic in their organization. And to do that, he did uh, application integration for six applications using their standard model they use for integrating new applications into the environment, standing up a new directory, building a new schema, a new structure, integrating the attributes that needed to be set up for that particular application so it could function the way it wanted to, and then deploying that into the production environment. And then he went back for those same six applications and did it again with Radiant Logic, using our tool as a build a single global profile once and then reuse that over and over again. And there's a number of things that he found in that process. One, if you look at the, the, the uh, surpassed ROI estimate bullet there halfway down, they projected an ROI for two years of a quarter million dollars. That was sufficient to bring the product in. What they actually recognized in the first two years was $1.4 million in return on investment. These are hard dollar savings. These aren't IT resources that got to go work someplace else and got counted as a cost savings. These are hard dollar savings and integration costs for applications. But the real important piece here for Intel wasn't just dollars. It was time. They're literally doing in days now what they used to do in months. And they've become a business enabler where they used to be a bottleneck. IT used to, be go, used to be where you'd go to here, any request would take six months, it would cost a quarter million dollars, and it would take a developer. When you have those three things in your budget, come back and we'll integrate your app. And a lot of applications sit up on the shelf, or a lot of projects don't take place, or a lot of really good ideas never get prototyped because the hump to get those 
just off the ground is so high. With Radiant Logic now, because they're doing this at such a high pace that they reduce their cost and overhead by 73%, they're able to do things now for $10,000 without a developer in three days. Things are taking place that never took place before. They've been able to expand their, their application integration. And this goes from customer to customer from ours across the board. We see this again and again in presentations done for us that we have that ability. So I'm going to touch really quickly as we touch the top of the hour here on where we have a big uh, play. Uh, mergers, acquisitions, divestitures, reorganizations, I think you can recognize anytime you're blending systems together, having us in there to do that blending work for you is critical. Access to anything, federated access, on-premise, cloud, that's where we're going to be important. We're going to be able to give you that single source of identity and bring your users together, whether it's employees, contractors, partners, customers, Multiple systems and databases and backends can all act as one. Um, fine grain authorization with smarter global groups. Synchronizing and provisioning into the cloud. It's necessary. It's going to be a requirement. You're going to want to do it from a clean uh, garage, not a messy one. You're going to want to do it for a tool that can understand and put all the information in multiple places. That's us. And then directory architecture and portals and compliance. A lot of work with SharePoint in making that system work. It's been really uh, critical for our customers. And this is just a quick snapshot of the kind of customers we're talking about. As I mentioned customers throughout my conversation here, people that we work with are large organizations with complex infrastructures with big challenges. We're solving big problems every day. We're talking to dozens of different types of backends or scores of different types of backends. We're servicing thousands of applications on the front end. We're dealing with multiple different contingencies and multiple different uh, requirements simultaneously. So, it's a challenge that we welcome. We want to talk to you about what that might be in your organization. And especially as you start to move up to Amazonia and Azuria, keep us in mind as a tool that's going to make that whole process faster, easier, more successful, and for your customers and your end users, much more seamless. I have a couple of minutes here for questions. I apologize for running long, but it's the beginning of the year and I'm a little out of practice. So let me see if I can bring my questions up here. and. Uh, answer a couple of those real quick before we roll off at the top of the hour. We will definitely address these all in uh, email responses back to the people who have the questions. Uh, can you get a copy of the deck? Yes, that will be sent out along with the links to this recording. Um, and then there was not getting audio. I sure hope you guys got audio because if you didn't, then I spoke for an hour or for nothing. Uh, oh, we're not going to the cloud at all, strictly on-premise or infrastructure would not be connected to the internet. Will Radiant Logic support that scenario? Yes, definitely. Radiant Logic is a, a software application that you install on your own hardware, whether that's a virtual machine or a physical machine, whether it's hosted in your data center or if you want to host it in a um, identity as a service in an Amazon or an Azure uh, data center, you, you run this software. So the majority of these logos you see on the screen right now are organizations that are currently running Radiant Logic on premise. And we're talking to on premise identity sources, we're talking to on premise applications. So if you're not moving to the cloud, if the cloud's not on your agenda, we've been doing this for 15 years and the cloud's only been around for five. So you can imagine the bread and butter for us is the problems you have, the challenges you have right now. Uh, and running this on premise is, is a, uh, a topology and a methodology that we use uh, ubiquitously. Um, how does Radiant Logic FID work with the organization's ILM infrastructure? Uh, if the FID provisions the identities to the other ID, ID stores. Um, you have a couple of ways for us to work with um, uh, provisioning platforms. And um, ILM, uh, if, if I'm getting the initials right, was here, is now MIM, which was FIM, which was um, Microsoft's original provisioning platform. But there's also a score of other provisioning solutions out there. What Radiant Logic does not include that some uh, provisioning platforms do is the workflow and approval and user self-service request functionality. What we do is the heavy lifting. We take that information and we push it onto the endpoints in the right protocol, the right time, and the right place. And we can also be a consolidator. So if you have multiple sources of HR and your provisioning platform, the, the workflow and authorization can only talk to one back end. It only wants requests coming from one place with one set of fields and attributes and one set of labels, we can take all those different HR feeds, aggregate those together into a single image, 
and then provide that to the uh, provisioning platform as what looks like a single source of provisioning requests. And then on the other end, we can take the output of that provisioning platform, whether it be an authorized request or, or anything else, and we can take that, that event and we can then apply that to whatever endpoints are appropriate for that particular request. If I'm provisioning a user with a particular role and it goes out to five endpoints, then I can provision them to those five endpoints for you. So you have a lot of flexibility there. Um, we can take existing infrastructure and move it, or we can be in the user creation, user update, user modification flow, aggregating multiple front ends for a single source to your decision engine. And then once your roles are all defined and everything is done and that provisioning action is kicked off, we can be the point that distributes that in your environment. So you've got a lot of flexibility there. And it's not a, a not a one or it's not an all or nothing scenario. Um, you can use it as, in as many different ways and functions as you choose, and you can evolve over time. You can start out just being an, an HR aggregator and then move on later to doing the endpoint provisioning, whatever makes sense in your environment. And I do apologize, there's about a dozen more questions here, but we're at the top of the hour and I don't want to hold anybody any longer. Thank you all for joining me today. We will answer these questions, get the, uh, the answers back out along with a copy of the slides and the webinar. This is just the beginning for us. We have a very ambitious webinar schedule for this year. Look for notifications in your email. Please come back as we are really uh, mixing up the information here. We're bringing in a lot more of the business drivers that our customers are looking at and what we're seeing in the environment, and we're including a lot more uh, other uh, subject matter experts that we're doing our webinars with. So you'll get the, the viewpoint of some of the key people in the identity space uh, in our industry. They'll be able to share what they're doing now and where they see the world going and what you need to do to make your life easier. So Happy New Year. Thank you all again, and I appreciate your time.